Hello YouTube world, how are you guys doing out there today? Hopefully very well. Okay, today's video subject is about how to improve an 040 pocket rocket. And, into, and if you've seen my last video, or the most recent on this particular loco, um, I did some detail and some, and some little bits and pieces on it. But it still didn't really perform as well as it really should. And the main thing is with the 040 pocket rockets, thus um, why I'm doing this video, is they tend to stall on point work, mainly Hornby points and, and so forth. Um, unless you've got electrofrog points, um, the standard um, self insulating points that you're ready to run you get from a Pornby or Pico um, these 040 little locos they tend to not like those points too much and they stall sometimes um, this is the loco in question it's a pocket rocket if you like or the, the infamous high speed <laughs> 040's these go like lightning they've got very very fast motors in but if you've got a decent transformer um, controller you can actually get some nice slow running speeds out of these anyway what I want to show you I did today I did a very easy peasy little mod on this that will help your loco to go across points much much better and they will operate full um, flawlessly and after this um, brief little how to I'm going to do a little demonstration run on the layout and you'll be able to see exactly what I'm talking about um, proofing the pudding and so forth anyway I'll get down to it so what I'm talking about today guys is this 040 loco in particular and as you can see um, they've only got two wheels on either side and they pick up from both wheels and that's how it works it's nothing spectacular um, the only pickups on these that were designed with which I'll show you in a minute when we take the body off you'll see in a moment that they've only got one set of connected pickups there's two pickups um, on each on each wheel so there's two that side and two that side but only one set of pickups goes to the motor and the other set of pickups just relies on the other wheel um, to make the circuit and that's why it stalls and I'll show you exactly what I've done so what I'll do is I'll just take the top off which comes off reasonably easy like so and then what I'll do I'll get my screwdriver and I'm gonna unscrew and show you what I'm talking about so first things first, we need to pop this chassis off. And you, when you open yours up, <clears throat> you, you will have a spring that goes from there. It goes across the motor to the other other side. It's a spring clip, and not only do they look crap on the outside, like by you can see the spring clip would be there normally, but they don't tend to look very nice and then they're pretty naff in general so what I've done I actually super glued my motor um, to the cast plate that it sits on and I'll show you again a bit more about that in a minute but the main thing is I'm going to unscrew this now and just show you briefly how I improved the pickup system on this and you better do it yourself it's well easy so all you do if we just remove this and just unclip it like that Gently take that cast plate off, and now we get down to the nitty gritty. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to. You'll see a screw there. You see that at home? It's just a simple screw that you just gently unscrew like that, and then I'm going to put that out the way in there. Whoop. And then I'm not going to pull this right out. But I'm just going to show you underneath how the pickup system works. The motor I've glued, like I said, to this, this chassis block. Not only to secure it tightly, but to stop it wobbling about in future anymore and becoming dislodged. It's permanently super glued on there. Although I could get it up with a screwdriver if I wanted to, if I needed to change the motor. But all we do, guys, if I just lift this out very carefully, and you will see underneath how it works if I put that on its end very carefully without dislodging anything come on today I'm going to use this don't laugh I'm going to use that and then what I'll do I'll take the camera off the tripod so we can see it at home you can see a closer inspection of what I'm talking about it makes sense right let's bring the light in a little bit so we can see what we're doing fantastic right if you can see on there, 
just about make this out. Hopefully you can see it better than I can. Um, let's get an aerial shot. Without that being in my face too much. Where are we? Right, okay. If you can see in there. Oops. There we go. Right, if you can see, you've got this pick up here that picks up from that wheel and it picks up from the other side. It's a long plate and basically there is a wire when you look at this and get to this stage of uh, the assembly you'll see a wire that goes from there that goes to one side the motor however the other side um, has got no wire it's just plain that's a better shot there I think that's better yeah so what I've done I've just soldered a wire which runs from this contact now to the motor, the other side of the motor. So, really dead easy, like I said, it looks looks quite fiddly, and it, it is a little bit, but to be honest with you, it's worth it, because you've now got these pickups properly functioning as pickups directly to the motor either side. So this is fed to the motor this side, and this is fed to the motor the other side. So you've got an additional wire now that you can solder from this pickup, which is normally plain and empty. <clears throat> solder your pickup wire to the tag, and then just run a little bit of wire to your motor. Don't run too much wire, because otherwise you'll take up too much space. And there we go. And as you can see, what I've done for easiness as well, I've sol I've not soldered, but I've super glued <clears throat> the motor to this chassis block. And because it's white metal, it's it super glues quite nicely, and everything's nice and secure on there. So in a nutshell, all you've got to do when you open it up and get to this stage, you'll notice on one side of the loco, when you look at yours at home, have a go, it's really easy. Straight away you'll notice that one set of pickups does not have any wire, and that's the side that you need to just add a little bit of wire to, solder it carefully, and then run it up to the other side, the motor, and then put the whole thing back together. And you'll notice straight away you'll notice the, the, the improved performance so I'm just going to put this back together now and I'll show you okay guys welcome back so I thought I'd just show you my controller set up it's old fashioned DC um, I've still got one of these things the old Hammett and Morgan controller um, these are actually these, these are quite old and it's not as good as that but these are really reliable and I use this for my third circuit and I've had this ages but she's a, she's quite a good controller and I do rate these as the Rolls Royce of controllers back in the day um, if you see them on eBay and you ever see these about in collectors fairs or on eBay mainly and they're in good condition and you need a controller these are quite reliable so uh, this will do until you get something like this this is my creme de la creme um, in terms of DC I love it this is my gauge master uh, twin track inertia controller I've had it since about 1987 and she's in excellent condition as you can see anyway the point is I'm going to use my inertia control uh, which gives a very nice slow speed and as you can see I've got it clocked between 35 to 40 I'm just going to bring it down slightly to about 32 and the loco is actually over there she's sitting there put back together and she's ready to go so I'm going to run it just around this curve and then across these points in the normal direction and then I'm going to transfer it rather cross over onto the other line there. We'll see it all in a minute but I'll explain more to, you'll see what happens anyway. But the point is I want to show you the slow speed I can get out of this and how improved it is over point work with the pickups, with the extra pickup soldered on there now. So I'm just going to release the brakes on this which is this little knob here it's actually off at the moment so put it back on select the direction which is what I want to do and now as soon as I release this you'll hear the hum of the motor and it should whir into life so he says let's go let's, let's find out shall we Right, 
watch this. Look at that. No stalling across there whatsoever. And I'm just gonna let her run round with that speed. Admittedly the wheels might need a little tiny bit of the clean, not too much, but she's still attempting it. I just want to prove a point that you can really get some slow speed out of these locos if you do the odd modification like I've done on mine. And also your track's clean and your wheels are reasonably clean. There's no reason why you can't, guys can't do this at home. Um, but to prove another point as mentioned earlier, I'm now going to set these switches manually. Because I'm old fashioned and I like to actually play with things. <laughs> just set my switches across there. And I'm just going to... You can hear it just in the tunnel somewhere. <laughs> okay, here she comes. It's over the back there. There she is. Making her way round. Now I'll bring the camera round this way. Here's the wobbliness of it. If I get a shot there, you can see it's going to go over one crossover or one set of points, if you like, to the next one with this crossover. So there's two lots of insulated gaps going to go over. Normally it's stalled. Watch this. There we go. So, as you can see, she runs really well. Just normalise those points. And I'll set it in that direction. And there we go, so I hope you enjoyed that. And that's one way, or certainly the only way I found, uh, by chance, that you can improve the pickups on a pocket rocket or an 040 
short wheelbase Hornby Loco. And if you've got any short wheelbase Hornby Loco or any make of um, 040 short wheelbase Loco, it's pretty much the same principle, if not the same, what I've just shown you that you can do. Simply solder an extra wire to the uh, to the pickup that's not soldered to anything, and you've got an, another working pickup. Now, why Hornby didn't do this, I don't know. Um, Hornby have come under a lot of crit criticism, I think, recently, and there's quite a few of my YouTube subscribers or watchers that have commented on several design faults that Hornby are just not picking up and getting a bit slack on in terms of quality control. Um, I quite agree. So, anyone from Hornby out there that's watching this, next time you put the 040 out there as a loco in the, in the catalogue edition of the, of the new year, maybe next year or whenever, there's a little trip for you, a little tip for you. <laughs> Please do add additional pickups inside these locos because they will vastly improve the performance. Um, I think these are designed for just an oval of track without points or just very basic, but these are like these are to me they're nice little locos. They're very handy for shunting and I like them. I think they're nice little characteristic locos. Anyway, um, that's enough waffle from me today. Uh, I'll try to keep it as brief as possible. And I hope that you enjoyed that little tip. And the really enjoyment for me is some feedback from you guys if you've watched it, saying that I've done this at home exactly what you've done and mine really works 10 times better than what it used to and thanks for your tips. To me that's, um, that's fruit in the pudding. Anyway guys and girls have a great day, take it easy and uh, I'll be back soon with another video. All the best.